Yo, what's poppin' guys? Do you want to make a space shooter like Galaga and Scratch? Of course you do, because you clicked on the video. I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's start. In this episode, we'll be covering basic menu scripting, how to navigate through the title screen, basic movement scripting, how to make your spaceship go horizontally, vertically, and diagonally, and basic shooting scripting, how to make a button that will cause your ship to shoot out a bullet. You're going to start by renaming your project to whatever you'd like it to be. Remember, it doesn't really matter at this point, as you can always change it later. Then we're going to delete the cat. Then you're going to design a title screen that you think is appealing. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, as you can always change it later. Create a bit of code to ensure that when the player clicks the green flag button, that it goes to the correct backdrop. We'll then create a play button that the player can click on to access the game. Art doesn't have to be amazing, as you can always replace it later. We'll then design the code for the button. Grab a green flag button and make sure it shows and goes to the correct location. Then we'll set up a system so that if the mouse is hovered over the button, it'll zoom in slightly. Grab a forever loop with an if else inside and make sure if touching the mouse pointer, it'll then change the size by four. Then grab an if statement and put in a greater than symbol and put 110 at the end and size at the front. So if size is greater than 110, in that situation, you will then set your size to 110. Then we'll duplicate that and put it in the else statement and swap everything around, making the change to a negative 4, the size to 100 as the normal size, change the greater than to a less than, and change the set size to 100. Now we'll design some code for the button to make sure that when the buttons push, something actually happens. Grab a when this sprite clicked and create a new message called level 1, or whatever you wish to call the first broadcast that'll start your first level. Then you'll just put a hide button underneath it, just so when you click the button, it hides. Then just design some quick background art for your battlefield. And don't forget to put under your play button sprite that when it's clicked, to switch the backdrop to battlefield. Now we'll create a new sprite and design the art for our spaceship. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because you can change it later. Now we'll design the code to make sure that the spaceship can move. Now, what are we looking at right here? Well, if we can start off with the green flag click button. Obviously, when we click the green flag, we want the spaceship to hide. Then we have a when I receive level 1, we will then show the sprite, switch the costume to the first costume, considering you have multiple, go to the location you would like it to go to, and set the size to whatever you'd like it to be. Then we'll make a forever loop where you will forever put the physics of the ship. That pink block right there that says physics is a block that you can create in Scratch that you can then define anything with and recall back to whenever you want. As you see now, right next to it, we define physics right in the next big block of code. Defining physics is if your up arrow is pressed, it'll change your Y by three, meaning you'll go up. If the down arrow is pressed, you'll change your Y by negative three, meaning your ship will go down. If you use the right arrow, your X will be changed by two, meaning you move forward. And if you click the left arrow key, you'll change your X by negative two, or your ship will move backwards. As you see here, I move my up and down faster than I move my forward and backwards. I'm doing this because in true NES fashion, it tends to be that whenever your ship is moving forward, rather than side to side. Now we'll design the main control for shooting. Hold up now. Before we start that, can I say that if you're enjoying the video and you're finding some of this stuff helpful, why not subscribe and like to me, because it helped me out a lot, and it'd make me more willing to do more tutorials like this in the future. Also, I'd recommend sticking to the end of the video, so you can hear the question of the day. The question of the day on this channel is a question that I ask at the end of the video, and whoever has the funniest answer by the time that I make my next video will get a shout out at the end of that video. But anyways, back to the video. Now design a basic bullet sprite separate from your spaceship so that it can shoot. Again, art doesn't have to be perfect because you can change it later. Now we'll set up the code to make sure that the bullet can move. Now let's take a look at our code. First, under our spaceship sprite, under the define physics block, we added a new if statement stating that if the space key is pressed, it'll check if a new variable called bullet cooldown equals one. 
If that statement is true, it will set the bullet cooldown variable to zero and create a clone of your bullet sprite. Then, under our bullet sprite, we make it so that when the green flag is clicked, it hides the bullet. Then, when the bullet starts as a clone, it will go to the spaceship sprite and show the clone. Then, we grab a repeat until loop and put an OR statement inside of it. We grab a touching edge block and leave the second one empty, which we will fill later. Then, inside of that loop, we put a move 10 steps block. Then, under that loop, we delete the clone. This makes it so that when the bullet is shot, it will move 10 steps right until it touches the edge. When it touches the edge, the clone will be deleted. Now if all went well, your game should look like this. Now you might realize that when you press the space button that you shoot way too many bullets at a time. Let's set up a system to add a cooldown. This code that we just created is underneath our bullet sprite. And as you see, we made a new block underneath our bullet sprite called cooldown timer. Now, when we start as a clone, we will begin that cooldown timer. Now defining cooldown timer means we wait one second and set bullet cooldown to one. This makes it so that when we shoot a bullet, it sets a cooldown to zero, which was in our spaceship sprite, and that one second after a bullet is shot, you can shoot again. Now if you test out your game again, you should have something that looks like this. As you can see, the bullets shoot much more reasonably, and you can change that one second timer to what you see fit. Anyways guys, that is going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and that you learned something along the way. Join me next week as we add more. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, then like it, and if you didn't like it, like it anyways, because I hope you like the new editing style, it's probably going to stay for a while. While you're at it, why not subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content, that helped me out immensely. Don't forget to join the Discord link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Then we'll design the play button so that when you click the play what what oh my goodness that doesn't even make sense <laughs> then we'll design the costume for the ship no wait we'll design the sprite that's what we're designing that's what we're doing <laughs> if all's gone well your game should look like this as you can probably see that what oh my god <laughs> i can't read <laughs>